Hello and welcome back to another lecture. In this lecture, we will create our database for this project in the private database subnet. To create our database, in the management console, type RDS in the search box and select RDS under services. Before we create our database, the first thing we will create is the subnet groups. And the subnet groups allows us to specify which subnets we want to create our database in. To create our subnet groups, select subnet groups here. Then click create DB subnet group. Give the subnet group a name. I'll call it database subnets. Once you've given the subnet group a name, we will use the same name as the description. Under VPC, select this drop down and select your dev VPC. Then scroll down. Under add subnets, this is where we select the subnets we want to create our RDS instance in. So under availability zones, select this drop down and select US East 1A and US East 1B. Then click out. Under subnets, select this drop down. In US East 1A, According to our reference architecture, the private data subnet has a CIDR block of 10.0.4.0/24. We'll select it. And in US East 1B, the private data subnet has a CIDR block of 10.0.5.0/24. Select it and click out. Make sure you have select the right subnets and scroll down, then click create. We have successfully created the subnet groups. Next, we will create the RDS instance. To create the RDS instance, select databases up here and click create database. Under choose a database creation method, we will leave it on standard create and scroll down. Under engine option, select MySQL and scroll down. Under engine version, select this drop down. And for this project, we will use the latest version of MySQL 8. So select the latest version of MySQL 8. Under templates, select dev and test. Then scroll down. Under availability and durability, this is where you can create a standby database. If you want to create a standby database, select multi-AZ. But for this project, so it doesn't cost us any money, select single DB instance and scroll down. Under database instance identifier, give your instance a name. Once you've given your instance a name, under master username, enter a username for your database. Once you've entered a username for your database, scroll down. And under master password, enter a password. Once you've entered your password, confirm your password here. Once you've confirmed your password, scroll down. Under instance class, select boss table classes. Then toggle this include previous generation classes on. Once you toggle it on, you will see the instance class dbt2 micro. This is the free one and scroll down. Under storage, we will leave the storage as default, scroll down. Under connectivity, for the VPC, select this drop down and select the dev VPC. Then scroll down. Under db subnet group, make sure the subnet group you created previously is selected here and scroll down. Under firewall security group, we will choose an existing security group. So remove the default security group and select this drop down, then select the database security group. Once you select the database security group, click out. Under availability zone preference, we will select this drop down and according to our reference architecture, we will create our master database in US East 1B. 
select US East 1B. Then scroll down. Under Database Authentication, we will leave it on Password Authentication and scroll down. Under Monitoring, we will leave it as default. Then click the drop down under Additional Configuration. Then scroll down. Under Database Options, for Initial Database Name, you must enter a database name here. So I'm going to enter a name for my database. And please remember, you must enter a database name here. Once you have entered the name for your database, scroll down. We will leave all these other options as default and click Create Database. We have successfully launched the RDS instance and the status is creating. Make sure you save your database username and password somewhere on your computer because we will need this information to connect the RDS instance to the ECS tags. To see your database username and password one more time, click View Credentials here. Here, you will see your database username and password. Copy it and save it somewhere on your computer because once you click away, you won't be able to see your database password again. To copy this information, click Copy here and save it somewhere on your computer. I'm going to close this tab. It is going to take a couple of minutes to create the RDS instance, so I'll pause the video and wait for the RDS instance to be created. After waiting a couple of minutes, click the refresh button here and the status of your RDS instance should be available. Then select your database instance identifier name. Some information to note about the RDS database that we will need later on in this project to connect the RDS database with the ECS tags is the database endpoint. Under connectivity and security, your database endpoint is here. Then if you select the configurations tab and scroll down here, here you will see your database name and here you will see your master username. The only information you won't see in the RDS console is your database password. So make sure you've saved your database password somewhere on your computer. If you have any questions on this lecture or there's any part you don't understand, please leave your comments below. Thank you and I'll see you in the next lecture. Bye.